living word. always contradictory things that will come against us that speak against what God's word says. Some people say, well, if God's word said that, then that it would mean that. And so it's just automatic. <clears throat> I've had people say, well, obviously by his stripes he word healed does not mean physical healing because if it were, then everybody would be healed. And well, the Bible tells us he's not willing that any man should perish, but everyone comes to the knowledge of the truth and be, and be saved. So, I mean, this, there still has to there be an application of faith and receiving Amen. his blessings. Amen. And so it's, we, we need to continue to do that. Even when I'm experiencing uh, issues in my, my uh, different parts of my body. Don't worry, it's nothing in the uh, other area. <laughs> but uh, they scream at me, try to tell me one thing, and God's word says enough. Amen. So I receive wholeness and soundness of body and my body. Amen. Only one working works within me. I'm the temple of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And so we want to continue to give and bless and, and increase in everything that God has for us. So uh, if it's offering time, time to prepare your giving unto the Lord. I have We have our offering ready. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, this week we've been doing some things around the house and trying to do things around the church here and having meetings with people. And, and uh, But one thing I noticed in this area, there's a lot of people that will tell you one thing and do another. I just, I, can't, I never run into it so much in my life. Uh, there's at least seven different businesses that said they would do something and they didn't do it. Uh, and just in this past week, seven different businesses. So it, it's, it's, uh, People need to learn integrity. You know, you're going to have your customer service is, is number one priority. You tell your customer you're going to do something, you do it. Or you call them and say, I apologize, and let them know. Common sense, right? <laughs> so you've got to, I've got to exercise patience during these times where, where people are being silly and, and uh, not doing things in accordance to what is... Uh, good and acceptable before God even. And uh, we just keep on loving the Lord and loving people and, and, and pressing in what God has for us and this church, praise God. And one of the ways I do pressing is in my giving. Thank you, Jesus. So let's pray over our offering, initial prayer, and then we'll say our corporate prayer together. Father, we just worship you and thank you so much for all that you do for us and all that you're doing. We submit to you completely, spirit, soul, and body. And we thank you for the fullness of your will being done in every area of our lives and in our finances. And so, Lord, we sow with joy. We bring our tithes in obedience to the storehouse. And we thank you, Lord, for your abundance being seen in this ministry, increasing that there will be no lack whatsoever in this ministry. And you'll accomplish everything you desire, you desire for it to do. You planted this ministry, and it shall grow and increase and flourish in the center of your best. And we're going to continue to press and exalt your truth and your word and your ways. And we will not lack, and this church will not lack. We declare it so in Jesus' name. Let's say this prayer. This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God in faith. I invest my seed securely where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. I thank you that I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. And as your word directs, I give with a cheerful heart from the first fruits of my income. I know that you're able to make all grace abound towards me, that I will have all sufficiency in all things, and have an abundance for every good work. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
guidance and your strength and your anointing that destroys yokes and removes burdens. We submit to you completely. We ask you to speak to us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to be our teacher and guide, to lead us and guide us in truth that makes us free. We ask you to open the eyes of our understanding so we may see things clearly and not be motivated by what people have said and circumstances, but be moved by you. You are the one that leads us and guides us. You're the one that directs our paths. And so we submit to you completely. We thank you for your direction, your guidance, your power, and your anointing to achieve all your will as it is in heaven. We receive it and ask for utterance to speak only those things you desire to be spoken, to bring furtherance to the kingdom's work in us and through us, and establish what you want to accomplish. Fulfill your purposes. Say this prayer for me, Father. I'm submitted to you completely. Spirit, soul, and body. Have your way in me. I ask you to open my eyes so I may see what I need to see. May I have ears to hear exactly what you are saying. And a voice of a stranger I will not follow but I will grow in sensitivity to your leading to fulfill your will as it is in heaven in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to go to a scripture I was quoting to my wife, uh, I think yesterday. Romans chapter 3. So I looked over that scripture this morning and uh, I just felt an anointing on it, so I'm going to go there. And then we'll look at another scripture that I felt something on as well. Romans chapter 3. This is not going to be on the screen because I was going in a different direction. In Romans chapter 3, verse 3. Actually, let's start in verse 1. We'll go to 3. What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now we have to see what he's talking about, so we have to go back to chapter 2 to see where, what he is referring to here. Uh, and we see it, uh, we have to probably go back a little further. Uh, verse 25 says, For circumcision verily profiteth if you are keeping the law, but if you are a breaker of the law, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. So circumcision is a sign of a covenant that you're making with God, and it's always according to a law. There's, good, there's a law that is established first, and the circumcision is the submission to that law. And so the act of the circumcision was showing that I'm sealed, that I'm part of a covenant with God. And uh, so then he goes on to say, therefore, if, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the what? law 
shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? So he's talking about this, that he's saying those that were born uncircumcised don't have and have not submitted themselves to a covenant, yet they are doing things that are of that law, of, of the law that is set in motion. He's saying their, their actions are showing that they have somewhat of a circumcised life. That they're, they're checking themselves in what seems to be moral. Uh, verse 27 says, And shall not un uncircumcision, which is by nature, means uncircumcision, they were born that way. If it fulfill the law, judge you who by the letter and circumcision does transgress the law. So he's saying, though you uh, by the letter submitted yourself to a, a ritual uh, of, of, of circumcision. Some people do that with church. They go to church, but yet the rest of their life is not walking according to something that they are submitting themselves, seem to be submitting themselves to. They're circumcised, they go to the temple, but yet their actions are contrary to the law behind it. And when we say law, merely, uh, there's generally a religious connotation to that. Uh, thoughts of uh, the Ten Commandments, so to speak, and 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 we understand that. But see, there's also laws, the law of gravity too. It's something. It's a working that is 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 a certain way. Uh, like God's river from the throne of God flows one direction and one way only, and certain things are not of that river. Certain things are not of that that. Uh, what he said in motion. And he's saying if, if someone who's not even uh, yield to those rituals that say he's a covenant person of that law, and yet his actions are are showing that he is, uh, that, that seems to be the same, that lines up with that law, then he said, isn't that more circumcised than your actions? And see, there's so many believers that are living worse than the world. There's people in the world that live, seem to be more righteous life uh, and actions than, uh, than most believers. <laughs> and what's up with that? Why? Because they're not cooperating with what is set in motion, that law that is set in motion. Now, I don't know why I was going this way, but uh, let's continue and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, then he says, verse 28, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh. So just because they were circumcised, what makes them God's people is not the, the rituals and actions and, and titles that some people have. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with your actions that what you're cooperating with, a law that shows that, that it's already circumcised unto the God, separate unto God. Verse 29, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Thank you, Jesus. So their, their actions are submitted to God, and they're out to please God, the God that they're circumcised unto. Then he goes on to say in verse 1 of Timothy, What advantage in hath the Jew? What profit is there of circumcision? And he says, Much every way, chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So it means that God has chosen them to carry what God is saying. He wants them to, he's given them, he's speaking to that, that generation. And we are, we are of that generation. We have been grafted in. Thank you, Jesus. And verse 3 says, For what if some did not believe, shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? If their actions and, and, and what they're doing seems to be working against what God is doing, is it really going to affect what God is doing? No. Is it going to hinder what God is doing? No. Though the world is falling apart all around us, 
it doesn't matter. It does not affect the kingdom of God. God's not falling off his throne when he sees certain things. He's not going, oh, man, I didn't see that one coming. He's, he's, not, he's not moved by these things. Thank you, Jesus. But he's moved by faith. The river is the same from established before the foundation of the world and continues all into, through eternity. It's one working, one law. One law. Remember Romans chapter 8, he says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes us free from the law of sin and death. That is the law we're submitted to now in Christ. We are submitted to the working. Remember, Christ is, interpret Christ is the anointed one, and he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. So the law of the spirit of life in the working of the Holy Spirit and power makes us free from the law of sin and death. That is what we're circumcised to. Thank you, Jesus. God told us specifically, if you have ought against any, go, go to them and make it right. If you have issues with somebody, go with it. Because otherwise you're cooperating with another working. Because God loves unity. God loves oneness. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have a problem with anybody. I love everybody equally. <laughs> I keep that on check. Thank you, Jesus. I do. I choose to forgive. I choose to love. Because I don't want anything to hinder me. I want to treat everybody the same equally. I don't want to treat anybody differently. Everybody gets the same amount of love from, from Pastor Kevin. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and, and, and remember the scripture in Romans 8 as well. He said, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, stress, so it goes on the, down the line. Persecution, what a calamity. It doesn't matter. Nothing can separate us from his love. Nothing can separate us from his power, except we can choose to separate ourselves. And that looks, that's also found in uh, Ephesians chapter 4. He said they were self-banished from the life of God. That they self they, they don't embrace life. They don't embrace good things and God things. And his law, the law is not, again, law means the law of the spirit of life in Christ. Now in this generation that we're in now, this dispensation is the Holy Ghost dispensation, grace dispensation. And we submit ourselves to his working. We submit ourselves to his anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're where we were. Where we last week, uh, the, the Lord told me His definition of the anointing again. The anointing is the ability of the Holy Spirit on believers to achieve the will of the Holy Spirit. So that anointing is on our lives and in our lives to achieve His will. And our faith in that anointing and that and that power working in us is what lifts us up. Colossians chapter two says, "Faith in the working of God lifts you up." Thank you, Lord. And that's where we are. We are those of faith in what we've received. Thank we've received Christ as our Lord. That means we're saying what's going to guide me from now on is that which was made Jesus the Christ. What's going to guide me from now on is what made Jesus the Christ on the earth. And because when Jesus went to heaven, the body of Christ remained here because of the Holy Ghost. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. And all creation is groaning in travail for the manifestation of those being led by the Spirit of God. And we are those that are led by the Spirit of God. And that's what Jesus said. Jesus said that it was his nourishment to, to be led by the Spirit, uh, what he received. Uh, John 4, 34, on the screen real quick, says, Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work, or what gives me nourishment, what I partake of, what strengthens me is doing his will, and, what's, and what blesses me is, is, is cooperating with what is set in motion on the inside of me. When we cooperate with the working, we're receiving spiritual strength, we're receiving spiritual nourishment at that time. Contained in God's working is his will and his plans, his desires and pleasures, Thank you, Lord. 
The anointing to achieve his will is inside you. This is why we, why we say cooperate with the working. And Jesus knew that. Jesus knew he wasn't going to cooperate with any other will. Because when we talk about the will of God, you know, what, how does plants and, and, and flowers, all that, uh, grow? Because they yield to a will of God that was set in motion on the inside of them, on the inside of those plants. The same way as what's inside of us, that's the kingdom of God working inside of us. We, by faith, cooperate with the working that works with inside of us mightily, and it achieves his will as it is in heaven. We're not our own will, but his will. And that's what Jesus said in John 6, 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Thank you, Lord. So that means that that will of him that sent me was working on the inside of him. Problem is religion separates this, the will of God. What's the will of God? And we think of specifics. Go to such and such town, and you'll meet a, a, a horse salesman there, and you'll tell him this and not that. That's, that's things to come that God, was, God will talk to us about, but the initial will is found in the beginning part of what he's saying, and that's where Jesus said, when it's expedient to you that I go away, if I do not go away, the Comforter cannot come to you, the Holy Ghost, and when he comes, he will lead you in truth. He will lead you in truth. There's the will of God. He will not speak of himself, that which he hears he'll speak, and then he'll show you things to come. All right, specifics to come. In actuality, when he shows you things to come, he's showing you ahead of time what you will cooperate with, the will of God that you'll cooperate with at that time when he gets there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, the will of God is right here. Will of God's not future tense, it's present tense always. It's a working will right now that we cooperate with that initiates and gets accomplishes certain things in the future. That's why Jesus said, take no thought for your life. Uh, and he, uh, he said about the future, about tomorrow, take no thought for tomorrow, or don't worry about tomorrow. Sufficient of the day is the evil thereof. It means that uh, you need to pay attention to right now because it's going to change your tomorrow. And, you just, oh, and that's what fear is. Fear is concern about what's going to happen. What, it's always future tense. It's always future tense. Uh, certain things may come in your presence that may crop up fear, but it's fear is, uh-oh, what's the unknown? What's, there's something to cooperate with right now in the midst of what's trying to produce fear in your life. That's the will of God. It's a working will of God right there. Thank you, Jesus. God established his will before, past tense, but to, to accomplish something right now. And so there's a working will right now that we can cooperate every second of every day. Right now. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, I came, I came to finish God's works. Well, God is wanting to work. I'm here to accomplish his works. I love what Jesus was said to, uh, this purpose, well, the Bible says, that this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Thank you, Lord. Well, I, I'm, I'm yielding to God's works. Praise God. I'm hooking up to him. So if, if uh, <clears throat> so he said he, he, was, he was manifested to finish his works, God's works. We are anointed for much more than ministry. Remember Acts 10.38? The Amplified Bible, it says this, Acts 10.38, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Spirit, with strength and ability, strength and ability and power, how he went about doing good, I like to interpret that as God, that's why I have it in uh, brackets, and in particular, cur curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. He anointed him with the Holy Spirit's strength, the Holy Spirit's ability, the Holy Spirit's power to do what? To achieve the will of the Holy Spirit. Yes? Was his will to set people free that were oppressed of the devil, the Holy Spirit's will? Yes. 
The Holy Spirit is working the will of God as it is in heaven. He is not making people sick. He doesn't do that. The devil does that. So his working is opposite. It heals. It brings blessings. My Bible says that every good thing and every perfect thing comes from above. Amen. From the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for what he set in motion inside of us. The power and ability of God rested upon Jesus so he could do the will of God. The same anointing is there for us to be godly, to be godlike, to manifest God in the earth. It's there. We're anointed with that. And it will fulfill God's <coughs> works. It will fulfill God's plans in your life. That's why you got to be, it's so important for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of speaking in tongues. And all you need regarding that is, is ask, believe you receive it, and speak out in tongues. That's what I did in, uh, in Texas. <clears throat> uh, in Texas, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I heard the person pray, I said, I receive it. And I knew, as a natural father loves to give good things unto his children, how much more will he give the Holy Spirit? So as many as ask. So as soon as I ask, he gave it. I have it. Well, I don't feel anything. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I feel, I have it. So therefore, I speak in obedience to my faith because I believe I received it. Therefore, I have it. Therefore, I can speak in tongues. Even though my head is going, you're dumb. You're, you didn't receive anything. This is ridiculous. Some people have this idea they're waiting for God to just kick them in the seat of the pants and speak in tongues or force them to do it. No, it's important for you to bring out your salvation. Actually, the, the, that, the, it's already inside your spirit. When you get born again, you're just, being, you're just releasing what's already inside your spirit. Thank you, Jesus, after being born again. That's why it's subsequent to, subsequent to uh, being saved. It's follows being saved, baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's in, in that is the anointing. You're releasing the anointing when you do that in faith. This anointing we are anointed with is the working of his divine power to carry out the things of God, to carry out the things of life, and to manifest his likeness in us and through us. Remember that uh, over Romans 8 as well? He said in verse 29 that uh, he was there to, regarding the life of God inside of us, uh, to manifest his life uh, through us. It shows a purpose scripture there in Romans uh, 8, 29. I, don't know, I, keep, I keep having to turn there. I can quote it, but. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Conform means that it's that we're molded and shaped by that image, and it manifests outward his image in the earth. Second Peter chapter one verse three in the Amplified says this. Second Peter chapter uh, one verse three says, "For his divine power has bestowed upon us." All things that are requisite and suited to life and godliness. He has bestowed upon us everything concerning life, everything concerning being as God is. Through the full and personal knowledge of him who called us by and to his own glory, excellent virtue. Excellence and virtue. He has called us unto his glory. He's called us unto this power. And he says he wants us to know him through knowing him. It manifests. That's why he told me years ago, he said, you'll find me in the working. He has given us, contained in this anointing, all things to manifest his holiness. All things to manifest his likeness. He's given it to us. I don't feel it. It's there. Inside your spirit, working right now. Who we are is according to that which is working in us. Say this out to me. Who I am, Who I am. Is, according is according to what is working inside me. To what is working inside me. Amen. 
<clears throat> That's who I am. Thank you, Lord. And that is what we put on. That is what we manifest on the outside. This is who I am. So I, I do it that way. Actually, many I've done it this morning even. Let me introduce you to who I am. This is who I am. Sometimes I stand in front of the mirror as if I was standing before the throne of God. God is saying to me, Kevin, show me my design. Show me what I created. And I say, my pleasure, my Lord. Here it is to the best of my ability, to what I know. And I have a fellowship with him. That's knowing God. Remember in the Bible where it says, so-and-so so knew so-and-so? is They had intimacy, right? They were intimate with one another. So we were knowing God to... It, through the knowledge of God, it's more than just head knowledge. We, it's, 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 it's intimacy. Through intimacy with God and oneness with the Lord, he said it, it manifests his glory through us. He unveils himself to us all the more. Thank you, Jesus. He says, how great are the things that he has prepared for those who love him. That's why it's the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 in the Amplified Bible says, strip yourself. Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Off white. We'll, tell, we'll tell you to, to keep, keep things on. Strip yourself of your former nature. <laughs> okay. Thanks for clarifying. Clip this, strip yourself of your former nature. Put off and discard your old, unrenewed self. Any other kind of work. Well, that lines up with what he said in Philippians chapter 3. He said, this one thing I do, I forget those things which are behind. Any other, other way to live, that's behind me. I strip myself of my former nature. I put it off, which characterizes your previous manner of life. And becomes... Corrupt through lust and des desires and s that spring from delusion. <laughs> I love the Amplified Bible. Well, it, it goes and amplifies what the original is saying. But here, he, you know, go back, Kelly. Here he's saying to us that he wants us to put off those things that are trying to lead us into corruption. Lead us to, through lusts and desires. Those things that are there to try to guide us. He said, strip yourself of those things. Don't let them be your guide. And, lead, and, and don't let those be your, what leads you. Now, he, he tells us how to strip it off. But the, next, the next verse he goes on to say, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. So he's saying that may, may, let your attitude be changed into that which is of the Holy Ghost. Well, in reality, the, the original is talking about let your mind be controlled by what your spirit is. How do I know that? Because the word renewed means restored. If you're going to restore something, you're going to take it back to what it was originally made for, right? And so your mind, will, and emotions, your soul, was originally made by God for God. Yes? To be led by God, to be led by the Holy Ghost. So if the verse before talked about, go back to the verse before, Kelly. He, it, the latter part there says, he told us to strip ourselves of that former nature, which is trying to lead us in lust and desires, right? In verse 23, he said, be restored in your, in your mind. Be restored spiritually in your mind. So that tells you those lust and desires are in the mind, aren't they? They're trying to lead and control your mind. How do I strip myself of those things? By yielding my mind, will, and emotions to another working that's leading me in righteousness, leading me in his power, leading me into accomplishing his will in my life. Just the same as Jesus said, what gives me nourishment is to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Then he didn't leave us there. He goes to verse 24. And put on the new nature. 
So the other one was the old nature trying to lead and guide in lust and desires to fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind. They were by nature children of wrath, according to Ephesians 2. But here he says, put on the new nature. Thank you, Lord. There's your answer. So he's saying, put it on as be seen manifest on the outside that you're being led by another nature. That's what it means to put on. I put on clothes. I put on clothes today. The shirt you see today mm. is something I put on to lead me. And, not to lead me, to, to show on the outside that I have something on. What manifests on the outside is, is what we're being led by on the inside. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus said that. Don't be concerned about tomorrow. He says, pay attention to what's going on right now. Why? It's what's going to change tomorrow. What I'm being led by today is going to show something that uh, the manifest on the outside tomorrow. Put on the new nature, the regenerate self. Not degenerate, regenerate self. <laughs> Created in God's image, God-like, in true righteousness and holiness. Notice that. True righteousness and holiness. So he's saying, and true holiness. True means that righteousness that's of God and holiness that's of God. Remember, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. So in Christ, again, is, is what Jesus was anointed with, emphasizing what Jesus was anointed with, Holy Ghost and power. So in the operation of the Holy Spirit and power, manifest God's righteousness. How, what does that look like? You cannot think about it, nor can you figure that out. How holy is God? The only answer is the utmost of holy. What does that mean? I don't know, but it's holy. <laughs> how, how righteous is God? Complete righteousness. So when he says true righteousness, true holiness, it's God's righteousness, God's holiness, and that doesn't come by figuring it out because nobody on earth knows what that is. <sighs> That's why he said, put on that which is true holiness. Put on, that it be seen on the outside, God's righteousness, God's holiness. Because <laughs> notice that he said that, put on the new nature, was created in God's image. So that's why it's true righteousness, true holiness, because it's God's image, his likeness. And nobody knows what that is. But yet, it seems like a lot of religious people, that's the supreme thing you need to focus on. You being righteous, you trying to do this, you be holy. And God's not wanting us to be holy is what we figure out what holiness is. No, he said, be holy as God is holy. So just as holy as God is. How can you be as holy as God is? You can't. On your own abilities. You have to have it and let it be. Oh my goodness. You let it be the holiness of God on the inside of you. Problem is, a lot of people are just letting it be everything else but that. Well, I'm just, you know, anytime you react to people's actions towards you, you are judging them. You, you can't respond to somebody's actions towards you without judging them first, worthy of your response. You understand what I'm talking about? Same way with our own personal life uh, with God. Are we going to cooperate with what we feel someone deserves? Or are we going to cooperate with the anointing and the holiness and the love of God and the peace of God and the unity of the Spirit? I want to cooperate with His work. The same anointing that worked in Jesus, that made Him the Christ, is working in you right now. And it's there to guide you in all the affairs of this life, this is what God called us to. He wants us to answer that call and let that working
direct our paths. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20 in the Amplified Bible, it says, But you have been anointed. You have been anointed. Remember, the anointing is the ability of the Holy Spirit upon a believer to achieve the will of the Holy Spirit. You have been anointed. You hold a sacred appointment. Notice that. Sacred appointment. It's a call, isn't it? This anointing is calling you to submit to it. From you have been uh, you have been given an unction, that's the anointing, from the Holy One, and you know you all know the truth, or you know all things. Remember what he told us? Jesus said that he, when the spirit of truth comes, he will <clears throat> guide us into all truth. He will not speak of himself. That which he hears, he'll, he'll speak and he'll show you things to come. He's why he says, no, you'll know all things. Do you really know all things? No, but the anointing does. That sacred appointment does. That's why he's called us, it's manifested through the knowledge of him. I, I believe we can look at it two ways. The more I know him, the more his glory is able to manifest in my life. But then if you look at on this way, through his knowledge, what he knows, it manifests his glory. I feel there's more power leading to that definition than the other. Because the other one's more work, seems to be. Well, the more I press in and try to know him, the more I'm going to be filled with his glory and his power. But the more I yield to what he knows, the more I yield to the Holy Spirit and that sacred appointment that knows all things, it manifests his glory and virtue in my life. Thank you, Jesus. I want to I wanna lean on that understanding better. I remember what he says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Thank you, Lord. Leading to the knowledge of Him. Leading to what He has designed us to be. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Nisa, come forward at this time. Praise the Lord. The more we surrender to the working of His anointing, the more we surrender to that sacred appointment, the more He's able to teach us His ways, the more He's able to show us things to come. Again, the Lord said to me years ago, that's where you're going to find me. That's where you're going to know me, is in that working. And, and, and when he said that to me, I was looking at Colossians uh, chapter 2, I think. Let me know it's chapter 1. He said, that you, I pray that you be filled with the knowledge of his will, with all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Notice that. I pray that you be filled with the knowledge of God. Well, that word filled is the same word that we use uh, in someone's intoxicated. So-and-so was filled with drink, some, uh, there has been said. That means that their, their, their faculties are being hindered by drink. So we could say it this way. I pray that you be filled so much so that it affects the way you speak, the way you move, the way you live your life. Thank you so much. With wisdom, the wisdom of God and spiritual understanding. So by that leading, you'll walk worthy unto the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That's why the Lord told me, he said, you'll find me or know me in the work. And he was referring to that. Thank you, Jesus. And that's what we want more. We want to know you. We don't want to be controlled by our feelings and fears, what may be happening in front of us. You said, but our light afflictions, but for a moment, works for us a far exceeding weight of glory while we look not at the things which are seen. 
for the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We thank you, Lord, for what you established forever settled in heaven in our lives. And we submit to that. We yield to your power. We yield to your working. We yield to your life. And we thank you for your will being done as it is in heaven, manifested in area, every area of our lives. We exalt you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for your manifested goodness in this church and every person. Lord, I'm going to continue to press until you tell me to do something else. I believe that every one of us will agree with that. So we just keep pressing until you show us something else. We want to be counted faithful to what you've given us. And we embrace what you've given us with joy. Thank you so much for what you're working in and through our lives. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Whew. Well, uh, tonight we're having a special prayer service. We're probably, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll put it online. I don't know. <clears throat> if you're able to come, we appreciate it. We'd love to see you here. It's at 6 p.m., one hour, unless the glory of God takes us further. It'll uh, be one hour of time. And on this Wednesday, our Bible studies are held in the same format that we have right here. It's not going to be in circles. It's going to be uh, spread out, whatever you want. And uh, it's at 7 p.m. Praise God. Anything else we need to announce? Don't forget, we our videos are on on Facebook, on the YouTube, and on the website, the church's website. Uh, there's teachings every day there. You can go get fed every day. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray uh, our last prayer here, and then Lisa's going to sing a song of dismissal. Lord, we just praise you and thank you so much for all that we received. It's been good to be here. Thank you for your guidance, your direction, your protection over every member of this church and every person here even those that are watching, Lord. Thank you for lifting us up through your power, guiding us in the center of your best to manifest all your riches and goodness in our lives. In Jesus' name, 